What's up, nerds? On this episode, we're going to be discussing Star Wars Rogue One, and I can't wait to see this. Jin, whatever I do, I do it to protect you. So you understand? I understand. Rebellion is all that remains to push back the Empire. You think you might be able to help us? When was the last time you were in contact with your father? What is this? It appears he is critical to the development of a super weapon. If my father built this thing, we need to find him. All right. How many do I need? They are requesting a call sign. It's, um, Rogue. Rogue One. The power that we are dealing with here is immeasurable. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. Hold of this moment. The force is strong. Make ten men feel like a hundred. We'll take the next chance. And the next time. You're all rebels, aren't you? Save the rebellion! Save the dream! you do if they break you? If you continue to fight... What will you become? Unfortunately, we have a Trekkie fan on the panel today, Dave. I, I do watch Star Wars, but again, yeah, I am more of a Trekkie. Well, uh, hey, everybody's into one thing over another, right? That's so, right. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I don't know about you. Oh, I love Star Wars, but uh, again, my movie range is quite wide. So, Yeah, <laughs> yeah hence why you're Scott the movie nerd. <laughs> All right, so... We wanted to touch on the Darth Vader concept on this. I know Dave wants to. Yeah, well, I've seen Darth Vader very short in the clip. Um, now, how much is he in the movie? We don't know. Uh, is he going to bring up people from the past? Like from episode one, two, and three? Yeah. Nobody knows. So. Yeah. Again, this is in between. Yeah, and exactly. Like, I mean, it all depends on how much Vader's in there, how much he talks, does he talk, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Is he focused on the past or just the future? That's exactly it. And, and I know you mentioned that the actor is no longer with them for the, from the original Darth Vader. But I'm wondering, because with the technology that's out there, they can pretty much manipulate anyone's voice yeah, in the sound. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because unlike in the third one, or sorry... The sixth one, I apologize. <laughs> uh, the third one, made. Let's go with that. Um, yeah, he, where he takes off the helmet when he's talking to Luke because he wants to see him with his own eyes. There, there's going to be none of that. So they may be able to do him speaking 
because you're not actually going to see the actor. You're just seeing... Well, the actor is a completely different yeah. voice, too, yeah. if you, you, well, you notice, because it, when he takes off his mask, it's a white guy. The best yeah. <laughs> and the voice is James Earl Jones. The <laughs> best thing about this is even the fans out there, they can go and buy a Darth Vader mask and sound like Darth Vader. Yeah, exactly. From any store, basically. So, so. so they, as uh, Scott was mentioning, they he could have a few lines. Now, I know this is mostly, as you stated, about the Rebels and about the creation of the Death Star... Or, sorry, yes. let me rephrase that. The Rebels as we know them from the 4th, 5th, and 6th, because there was the Rebels in the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd one as well. They just weren't called the Rebels. Or I believe it was just the Resistance, wasn't it? Yes, that's yeah. what they ended up being. Yeah. So, and you're also saying, Scott, maybe, just because this is between 3 and 4, he might mention his children. Well, I'm wondering about that because it's still kind of fresh. But, I again, it all depends on how much he really talks, right? Yeah, because, yeah. again, it's in between, and it's trying to get the plans for the Death Star for the Rebels so they can find the weakness. Yeah, exactly. The Death Star. This movie, I believe, is more like Rogue One, which is what they're called now, becoming the Resistance. That's right. The Rebel Alliance, yeah. yeah. Now, I know you might yell at me for this, Shane, but I'm just speculating here. Could the plans that we saw when they went to attack the Death Star in, I believe it was the fifth one? No, the fourth one. The fourth, fourth. fourth one? Sorry, yeah. I apologize. In the fourth one, I wonder if those are the plans that they're trying to get now. That is. Yeah, that, exactly. That is exactly but is it, is it the same plans? That, yeah, that is exactly yeah. what the movie's about. Yeah, because there's only one actual Death Star until you see the seventh yeah, one. But is it... Planet. Yeah, planet <laughs> No, no, the, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is the plans that we see in the fourth one, is that gathered from other sources of intel or put together by the Rebels to what they know? Or is it they were actually successful in this movie? And They're successful made. in this movie. Are they? That's The whole movie is based on okay. getting the plans for the Death I wasn't sure if they were the successful in the yeah. movie or and what we see in the fourth could have been just gathering of intel and well, what have, they know about the Death Star. It could have a bit of a mixture, too. Like, yes, yeah, they're, they're successful in getting the plans, but there's got to be a way that they get them. There's got to be if, somebody on the inside. If you watch the trailer closely, the girl that broke one, I can't remember her name is, um, her father is the one that created the Death Star. Okay, so there was uh, somebody kind of on the inside. The, okay. Yeah, okay. Now, so her father is the admiral that oversaw the construction of the Death Star? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So, so. Yeah, that's how the plans are going to get, come about. It said her father is someone creating the Death Star. Okay. Now, another thing that we actually got a huge argument on <laughs> between each other before we started filming. And I know you're probably going to disapprove of it and highly doubt it, but me and Scott came up with a kind of happy medium. Could there be a mention of the Legend of the Jedi's? Okay. Now, I, I know at the end of the third, as and this was your argument, they were completely wiped out at the end of the third oh, movie. Obliterated. Um, including the schools, the children, everything was all wiped out by this lovely gentleman right here. Uh, uh, no, by no. that lovely gentleman there. That lovely gentleman right there. <laughs> This is this is the one. That's Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren. That's, That's Darth Vader. Oh, sorry. Yes, sorry. I got my movie. Although I know stuff. as Anakin Skywalker. Yes. Anakin Skywalker. Yes. Correct. Sorry, that was my mistake. Yes, it was Anakin Skywalker. He was the future Sith master. Yeah. Um, do you think they could mention a legend of a Jedi? Since no, they do. I don't have think they're going to mention a legend of a Jedi. There, there, there may be someone in this with mention of metachlorians maybe but uh, i don't see anything about jedis because of darth vader wiping them all out and yoda and ben kenobi are going to be in hiding in the next ones and that's it there is no jedis so um if you watch any of the the older versions three uh three four five six four four, five six yes um Jedi's are a thing of the past. They're just a legend. Again, as you said, legend. But no one talks of it. No one. You, knows you don't anything. think they're gonna mention it? Because I know at the start of the fourth, there was a mention of the legend of Jedi before Luke went off and actually got facts about it. Well, when Luke heard it was about just the, a legend. Yeah, when Luke heard about Jedi's, everyone, uh, his parents, his adopted parents, went just like wanted to dismiss it completely. It's like. The, they don't talk of. They yeah. do not talk of Jedi's. There is no talking of Jedi's. Yeah. Well, I understand that. I'm just curious that they might 
at some point mentioned. Well, the one thing that really I'm interested in seeing is there's two characters that are always been with the resistance, as far as I know from the start, and that might be Rogue One, or sorry, Rogue One, C-3PO and r 2 d Yes, I didn't even see them. Are they, they were the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, and the seventh one. Yeah. So, do you think there could be a appearance of R2-D2 or... Well, the popular characters, I mean, yeah. that'd be great if they were. It would be, but um, I don't see it at this point. No? No, because it's all speculation again. We, we don't know where, where they yeah. are at this point, because we don't know the time frame from the last one, where they are, or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm just going by from the third one, because Luke is actually the one, or sorry, Anakin is the one that actually basically put uh, uh, C-3PO together. Yeah, that's exactly so it. So I'm wondering if maybe somehow he's they went with some kind of a resistance, or are they even going to maybe play a quick cameo in it? Mm-hmm. I agree. You know? I agree, because, uh, again, when uh, Anakin gets burned up in the, the pits <laughs> oh, and wow. gets into his suit, um, C-3PO and R2-D2, where, where do they go now? We don't know. We have no idea. I think they went with uh, Ben Kenobi. Yeah, obviously they went with Ben Kenobi, but again, we're coming into another movie where Ben Kenobi's in hiding, so where did they go? go? And wasn't it at the end of the fourth, they were actually, or sorry, at the start of the fourth, they were actually with the Rebel Alliance? They with Leia. Yes, and Princess Leia, who was the leader of the Alliance at the start of the fourth, actually sent them to go find Obi-Wan Kenobi. Well, that makes sense, though. I wonder if maybe the two... Uh, androids are actually with the royal family. The no, royal family, yes. The royal family. That, yeah, because they remember, and then Luke discovers them, and R two D two keeps trying to leave, saying, "I have to find Obi Wan Kenobi." And Luke's like, "I wonder if they mean old, old ben, ben Kenobi." Yeah, old man Ben Kenobi, or yeah. the old crazy guy in the desert. So maybe yeah, we might yeah, see a might see it, yeah. Yeah, like like I said, probably if anything, maybe a little short couple minute cameo or something like that. Yeah. Or or you just see like in the seventh R two D two shut down pretty much the entire movie. You just see him. He doesn't move. He doesn't do anything until they get close to. Yeah, but then like, I, I don't around see around that again. Yeah, it's focused on the Death Star yeah. and yeah. the Rebels. That's that's basically the entire movie. Which, so they're which, not going to focus on stuff that we've seen before. No, but that also brings me to my point as well. Is there possibly going to be a mention of Han Solo and maybe the Millennium Falcon since they were sca- scavengers or pirates? Maybe the uh, he's sent in to bring in parts of the Death Star for them. Who knows? You know. Um, at that, that point in time, they, they were working for Jabba the Hutt. I thought he was working for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, I mean, who knows? Well, there is the primary, and that's how he winds up in the... Yeah. What, what is it he winds up in? Maybe um, in the fifth. What's that called? In Carbonite. 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 Okay, I want to say Carbonite, but I wasn't sure if that was what it's called. I didn't want to mess that up. You, you saw that because he didn't pay Java, so Java takes him and Carbonite yeah. as payment. So. All right. Now, the last thing I wanted to ask, because you are such a huge, huge... Uh, Star Wars fan, the plans that we see in Episode Four, do you think they're the exact plans that they successfully get in Rogue One, or is it a combination of their limited intel, limited knowledge, and information that they just managed over the years to gather on the Death Star as it was being built? No, it's all from Rogue One. You, you think 100%. it's all okay? Yeah. That's what the movie's based on. Shane's a big Star Wars guy. Yep. The question I have is. Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, I'm confused on that character myself. <laughs> I, I have no idea who he is. Uh, he's pretty cool. He's, he's robotic, basically. He, his, his legs are robotic. Um, Forrest Whitaker, as uh, an actor, I love. He plays good parts. He does. Um, again, that remains to be seen. We'll have to watch and see. I have no idea what his character is, but uh, yeah, it'll have to do with the Rebels, obviously. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think it's going to live up to the standards of, standards of all the Star Wars movies. I completely agree. So, yeah. I think uh, Disney's doing a great job. Oh, I can't yeah. wait to see the next episode 8. Either. Yes, it's gonna be I nuts. agree. But I'm not going to get on that because it's going to be out of topic here. So <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll end it here. We'll say, uh, so we'll go back to the rating. Uh, we'll start with Dave this time. What do you think? Um, well, I, as I said, I'm a huge Trekkie, but I do like my Star Wars. 
And again, as you know, I don't know a lot on it, so I'm going to go with a 7.5. Just because of that, that's the only reason I'm going with that. I think I'm going with the CGI and what I saw on the trailer. All right. What do you think? 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah, 10. You know what? I'm, I'm going to be a little optimistic on this. I'm going to sit there and say probably, I'm going to say a 9, but with possible improvement. Okay. i got to see more of the movie, got to see more of the a- action, more of the acting, and the effects. Fair enough. I want to find out if it does live up to the expectations. All right, thanks guys for watching this episode of Star Wars Rogue One. Uh, don't forget to leave comments down below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks guys.